All right, so today I'm going to show you how to make a bill of materials table. So the bill of materials table that we're going to look, that we're going to create, it's going to look like this. So as far as the quantity, name, number, item number, and then a parts list heading with these sizes. And specifically each one of these columns, you know, what's driving that information, where's that information coming from? Pretty much they're all automatic. So the quantity column's automatic, the item number column's automatic, the part number, uh, we're gonna get that from the file name itself, so it's gonna automatically populate. Then the one that we need to set up that's gonna be different from one part to the next is this description. And so we need to create a property called description-skills. So that's some of the stuff we're gonna do. A little bit of other background information, so specifically what I'm gonna show you how to do in this demonstration is how to link properties to table cells in here, adjust and lock those table cells, uh, changing the font, insert and delete columns, rearrange columns, and save a bomb table. The one thing to keep in mind as we're working through this, and I'll try to point this out a couple times throughout this demonstration, is to do this, to set up our bomb table, we have to have a drawing. And so when you open that drawing and you make changes to this bomb template, save the bomb template, but at the same time, we're working on a project where we're editing sheet formats and custom properties. Um, do not open this drawing, make changes to your sheet format and try to save those back to your template, okay? That won't work. So when you do this, make sure you start from scratch, you create a new drawing, make changes to your bomb template, save the bomb template, close everything out and then try it again. And again, I'll try to point that out a couple times as we go through here. So in SOLIDWORKS, we're going to go ahead and click on the new sheet of paper. And if you don't see this already, go ahead and click on, if this is what it looks like, go ahead and click on advanced to come over here. And we're going to start from this SATC part template that we've been working from. So go ahead and click on that, hit open. So once it opens, mine opened with a sketch. So I'm just going to go, go ahead and hit the red X and discard changes to my sketch. And so the first thing is I want to go take a look at file properties. So click on file properties. If you don't have this icon, you can also get there through the file menu and then click on properties. And so you'll notice, so for this SATC template, I've got three custom properties. So the custom properties that you use in your bomb template, make sure that none of the descriptions match these names. So like I said, we needed to create a new one. So the only new one that we need, we're going to call it description hyphen skills. So go ahead and click in the property name box. And I'm just going to put this in all capital letters, description hyphen skills. And then that's all we need. So I'll go ahead and hit OK. And so I made this change to this part template. Now I need to save this template. So I'll do a save as, change my save as type to a part template. And I'm going to call this so we'll save it as skills so I'll go ahead and click in that file name box call it skills USA and then hyphen your initials. And so it can have the same file name because it's going to have a different file extension. So we'll do skills USA RLW and hit save. And now I'll go ahead and close out of this because this is my template. So I'll close out of that. Click on my new sheet of paper. Now I've got this part template skills USA with my initials. I'll go ahead and create a new part for that. And I just need to sketch anything. So you can draw circles, probably the easiest thing. So I'll do a circle with a diameter of three and then extrude it, say, four inches. Okay. And now I'll go ahead and save it. And I'm just going to save it on my desktop because this is just something I'm using to create my bomb table after my bomb table is complete. I don't need it ever again. So I'll click on desktop and I'll call this my skills bomb part so you can give it a file name and notice you're saving it as a part 
So we'll hit save. And then I'm going to go ahead and close it out. So I'm back to just having nothing open. So now I'm going to click on new. So the Skills USA drawing that we've been working on and drawing template, we'll select Skills USA with your initials, hit OK. Now this is the part where I was mentioning, so you're going to open a drawing to make changes and save a bomb template, then close the drawing. So this is what I'm talking about. We started from scratch. I'm going to insert a view. So my model view is already up. I can click on browse, come out here, find my desktop. And I want to find that part I just created, skills, bomb, part, hit open, and just place one view of it. Doesn't matter what view it is, front, top, right, or anything. So place one, hit escape. Now I've got something started. So I'll go over here to annotation. Uh, come all the way down to the end to tables, select a bill of materials. It asked me to select a drawing view, so I'll go ahead and select that drawing view. And then here it's got my SATC bomb assembly. I'll go ahead and click on my star, and that's going to show me where these are all saved at. So we want to save them in this location. So C program files, SolidWorks Corp, SolidWorks Lang in English. But then it'd also be a good idea for you to save them on your network drive as a backup copy in case anything ever happens to these. So I'll go ahead and start from the SATC bomb assembly. So I'm going to use this one right here, SATC bomb ASSM. So I'll select it, hit open, and now I just hit the green check mark. All right. So then this is all we're working with is we're going to start working with this table until it matches this. So the first thing, I'm going to select this four-headed arrow up here, and mine was set to attach to an anchor point. I'm just going to uncheck that box. After I do that, I can grab that arrow and I can just drag this thing around and put it wherever I want to. Okay. So now, the first thing was linking these different cells. So over here on the left, my first one's item number, so it's already linked to the correct one. I just want to change the text. So I'll double click in that text and just take off the NO period part. So that one's good. So then the next one, I want it to be my part number column. So I'm going to go ahead and double click inside of there and then just take out part. Now I've got number. And then to move that, I'm going to click on this C up here. And then I'm going to left click and drag that column to be on the other side of quantity. So once you get over there, it'll snap in place and you can let go. And now quantity, I want it to be at the end. So I'll click on C and hold it down and drag it so that it's on the end. So I've got item, number, description, and quantity. So my description column, I'll go ahead and double click on it. And I want to change that to name. All right, now I'll start working with some of these columns. So the only column that needs to be changed is this C column. So if I double click on C, you'll see I get the option column types a custom property. So under property name, I want that to be linked to that new property that I created. So description hyphen skills. I'll go ahead and click on that. Then I can click off that and I can change the name without losing that link. So I want to change this back to say name, but it'll still be linked to that same custom property. All right, so then the next thing before I start messing with the uh, column widths and row heights is I want to change the font. So I'll click on this four headed arrow. And when I do that, I get uh, this text formatting toolbar that comes up. I'm going to click on this A over here on the side where it's currently linked to the document font because I want to change that. We're going to leave it at Arial, but I'm going to change this text height to be 0.1 for the entire table. So everything is 0.1 inches tall. Now I can start working with these different columns. So I'll left click on D and then right click and choose formatting. 
and then column width, and I'll change that to be 0.4375. And I'll go ahead and do that for the rest of these as well, just by clicking on the C portion, then right click, come down to formatting, column width, and go ahead and type that in. All right, so now once you've got all those column widths set, then we need to work on the row heights. So the row heights, select the two, and then right click, come over to formatting. Yours is already locked, so you'll have to unlock it by clicking on row height, and then come back to the two, right click on it again, choose formatting, and do row height, and set it to be 0.25 and then do that for row one as well. All right, so now we're in pretty good shape. Just a few other things here to finish this off. So one thing is go back and lock in those row heights. So I'm gonna select row one, hold down control, select row two, and then right click, go to formatting, and I want to lock the row height so that it's always a quarter of an inch. And then for D and then holding down control and selecting B and A, I want to go ahead and lock those column widths for those. So there will be times when the name column will have to get wider, but none of the rest of them will. So we can lock all those. All right, so then the next thing is from the version that we're copying, this uh, parts list is at the bottom, and then the numbers go up from there. So to switch that, we're going to click on this four-headed arrow up in the upper left-hand corner, and then there's this option table header at top. Just go ahead and click on it. It puts the table header at the bottom. All right, something else that I notice is in the item column, those are centered, number column, they are left justified, name column left justified, and then quantity is centered, so we want those to be the same. So we're centered, so here in this number column, I'm going to go ahead and select that column. I'm going to do left justified. And then I'm going to adjust this horizontal cell padding. So I'll double click in that cell and type 1 16th of an inch and hit enter. And that moves it over to give me some space there. So then do the same thing for this cell under name. So I'll click in the cell. I want to make sure it's left justified. And then change that horizontal cell padding to be 1 16th of an inch. All right, so it looked like when I did that, it stretched my column width. So I just want to go ahead and click on C and then right click, go back to formatting and check that column width. And I wanna reset that column width back to one and a half inches. There we go. And then when I click on that cell, I can see my horizontal cell padding is still the same. All right, then at this point, we pretty much have it. About the last thing we have to do is save this and then test it. So to save this, let's first go and find out where we're actually saving these at again. So if you don't remember from before, you can go back to options. Once you get into options, you're going to be under system options, and you're going to click on file locations. Under show folders for, you're going to select bomb templates. And so that's your path. If you've written that path down, go ahead and hit OK. And then come in here, you click on that four-headed arrow, left click on it, and then right click, come down to save as. You'll see that you're saving this as a template, so we need to go find that same location. So that was the C drive, program files, SolidWorks Corp, SolidWorks, Lang, English, and then you should see other ones there. So let's call this our Skills USA, hyphen your initials, hit save. This is telling me I don't have permission to save it there directly. So what I can do is save it on my desktop and then copy it from my desktop into that folder. And then you'll want to use those templates to try this and make sure it works. So that's all I got time for now. Thanks for listening.